three intersections with the med medical field. So I'm going to try and approach this conversation from those three perspectives, which is clearly different from the previous speakers. The first is that I'm a service provider to, to the industry. Secondly, I am a service consumer to the industry. And finally, I'm a service innovation cheerleader to the industry. And you will see what I mean by those three. This is the first problem that I see in the medical field. We have fantastic, fant and I use the word fantastic with capital letter, medical doctors, medical practitioners in all fields. We have examples. If you go to US today, you will see Nigerians are shining. But one area that bleeds my heart is that they refuse to develop themselves and move into the realm of management. That, for me, is one of the challenges that is slowing down uh, the, the uptake that we, we want in our country. As a consumer, two things have happened to me in the last 24, 24 months. The first was when I had to use the service. Typically, I, I belong to the old school. If I walk into a room and I see a medical doctor and he doesn't have a gray hair or something like that, you don't have the right experience to treat me. This is, this is my mindset, all right? And I believe a lot of people will probably behave in the same way. But more recently, and because of technology, I have started changing the way in which I see this. I walked into my provider, and then I met this young lady that looks like a youth copper to me. And my first impression was to say, sorry, you do not even have the experience to treat me. But because my case file has already been digitized, everything she was seeing it, and she knew the consultant that worked with me last. And she gave the consultant a call. She already had an idea of two or three possibilities but she wanted to be sure. Usually, it would take about two months for me to be able to see that consultant. But with a phone call, she clarified, and then I didn't have to see the consultant. That, for me, is what ICT will, will do in the medical field. So today, honestly, I don't care whether you have gray hair, yellow hair, whatever it is. So long as you understand that there is a tool that you can use to correctly diagonize and then treat me, then that is fine. This is where we need to move into. However, same service provider shocked me. I moved in for another you know, visit, and I saw a much experienced, in quotes, practi uh, practitioner. White hair, white beard, like your own, fantastic. But you know what? He could not use the computer. So we had to call, and that for me is a big problem. Yes, you can use residual knowledge and all of that. But where we are going, I'm sorry, that knowledge is absolutely useless because I can also have access to that knowledge. I went with my son to the UK to see a doctor. And guess what? Every single thing the doctor was saying, he showed us the screen, and everything was on Google Medical or whatever they call it. Yeah, everything. And then gave us references where we can go and read a lot more about it. So it's now a collaboration between the medical practitioners and us as users then I have more confidence. And that is why people would rather go, in quote, abroad than to stay here in Nigeria. In fact, I was pleasantly shocked. In the last few weeks, maybe months, we have been collaborating with Farm Access so that we can 
develop the managerial capacities of people in this field. We try to, we, we, we develop people using case studies. And we wanted some unique case studies that are local to our environment that people can relate to. You know my shock? Every successful case study we could have used, the doctors, the medical practitioners don't want us to record it for so many reasons. Big ring fencing. How can we develop that space? You know, America developed today because people just wanted to share those cases, good or bad. Because we will all learn from it, including the protagonists of those cases. However, mine is leadership within the health sector itself. Like I started my story, we have fantastic, fantastic practitioners. But we need to make two plus two to be greater than four. Which means we have to work together. Let me move quickly to me as an innovation cheerleader, because this is where we are going to end up. There are a few sectors that ICT, but much more than ICT, is going to affect. Um, Agric is one of them, but health is going to be a big one. And there are about five things that you need to reflect on. The first is called Internet of Things. Internet of Things. The second is drones. Drones. The third is going to be wearables. And the fourth, which the previous speaker mentioned briefly, is going to be big data. These are four things that whether we like it or not, that is going to be a big changer. And if we want to affect lives positively in our country, we have to begin to think of all these four together. Let me go very quickly into one or two of them. In recent times, I have been a preacher because I'm also a student of, of disruptive thinking. Big data, your cars will not be primarily for taking you from point A to point B. That will not be the use of cars in the next five, maybe to 10 years. It will be a secondary reason. Your shoes will no longer be for you to wear so that you don't get your feet injured. That will be a secondary reason because disruption is already happening. Those things will be data collection points. And so the reason why you are having driverless cars today is because those cars can move and pick up data as they are going. And per chance, you want to move along a particular path, you can hop in and then go. So it's not reason, the reason is not to move you from point A to point B, because you can just hop into any car anyway, is primarily going to be collecting data. The same with your shoes, wearables. So as I'm wearing glasses today, I'm going to be able to see all of you, and I'm going to be seeing all kinds of data about you. All kinds of data. It's already happening. Once you wear glasses, I, don't, I can be talking to you, I can be reading what you are saying, it can be converted quickly, and I don't even need an interpreter. If you think it's like Space 99, sorry, it's, you're already in the dinosaur age. I'm very serious. In fact, last month, I was in, I was in Paris discussing the, the evolution of workspace, how people are going to be working in the future. Let me tell you, most of us, we are going to be archaic people. This is the reality. When I was growing up, we used to, we used to talk about careers and all of that. My daughter came out just looking at me. What do you mean by careers? There's nothing called career. Just develop your expertise and you can serve seven companies at the same time in the same sector. That's a mind shift. Drones. Almost anything and everything that drones can do, 
We are already doing it in Nigeria. So in the medical field, you better think very quickly. So people in the rural areas, it's very easy to develop and to deliver uh, medicines to them now for next to nothing. And they're already flying. My daughter was working in one of these places when we had the, um, the Lagos Marathon. They, they sounded and felt like CNN to me, about five or six young people. They were flying drones as people were leaving, as they were coming into the stadium, all of that. And then they had two or three of them in where they call the situation room. Young people, most of them between 23 and 27. And then people were sent, and, and the drones were sending shots, pictures, into the situation room. They were creating mums, and then they were sending it, and they were posting it real time. We can do almost all of this in the health sector. It's not a big deal anymore, and these are being done by young people that are under thirties. If you don't do it, I'm sorry, it's gonna happen. I have two or three students under age 26 that have shocked me. One of them even got an award uh, given to him uh, by the Queen of England uh, last year. These people are not medical practitioners. In fact, one of them is an economist. But they are entering the medical space to disrupt the medical space. We need more of this type of people, in my opinion. What this guy is doing is to bring together pharmacists, the, 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 the pharmacists, and say, what are you selling to who on a daily basis? That's all. And that information He's given to them, you'll be able to know your stock and all of this, so it's easier for you to reorder. But for him, he's collecting big data. And he's going into a central pool where he's interpreting that and saying, people are buying 7 million Panadol. Why? Maybe the government is giving all of us headache. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> but that is the interpretation that big data helps you to do. So, and then the guy said, there is an opportunity here because we may be able to do other things that reduces this giving of headache and, and, and sort. Let me end with Jamibora. Jamibora it's, uh, used to be the, the wife of a Swiss ambassador to, to Kenya. And eventually she loved Kenya and she stayed there. And I had the opportunity of meeting her. Eventually she ran a microfinance institution because she wanted she was so worried about how the poverty uh, in, in rural Kenya and they started lending to these people then something happened something happened she noticed that a number of the people they were lending to women were not returning as they usually will do on close examination it found, they found out that it's because the children were sick. So health issues. And then, because she's also a woman, the woman, they told her, I said, if your child is sick, which one will you do first? Use that same money to treat your child or use that money to pay back your loan? And she said, wow, this is big insight. She started an HMO that was costing them, I don't know, something like less than maybe 50 kobo per day taking away from their phone, and all of a sudden, repayment went up. Because with the HMO, if the children get sick, they go to the hospital. You see how medical insurance links to how people can repay and then empower them from the business perspective. I thank you very much.